The woman who takes her turn on African Port Business Forum today says she reads a book a month to keep up with the dynamic business environment. And that is just one of the things she does to satisfy her thirst for knowledge while she works to promote trade in Kenya. My name is Philip Nyakbo, your host on African Port Business Forum. My guest, Rose Rono, is the head of the Trade Facilitation Directory at Kentrade. Kentrade is a government agency in Kenya responsible for trade facilitation. In this thoughtful business conversation, Rose Rono says, trade, not aid, is the key to combat poverty in Africa. Kentred is a, a government organization in Kenya, uh, which was set up primarily to implement uh, a system called the single window system. And uh, this is basically a system that, um, an, an electronic system that automates the international trade process, that is the import and the export process. Um, and Kenya has gone ahead to implement this system as a result of signing of the WTO Trade Facilitation Agreement. So it is one of the articles in the uh, uh, Trade Facilitation Agreement. So our, pre- our mandate as Kentry is to implement and maintain that system. Uh, additionally, also to look at trade facilitation within the country, just looking at what are the issues that uh, exporters and importers are having within Kenya and ensuring that we are able to eliminate them, looking at the non-tariff barriers and the, the tariff barriers, and just looking at how we can be able to make the trading environment more conducive. Now, how did you end up in the role of trade facilitator or director, trade uh, facilitation for Kentrade? So I've interacted with trade facilitation for the past six years, but specifically in the role of uh, trade facilitation and uh, the technical role, I've just been here for eight months. My previous experience has been uh, basically marketing and communication. So I'm in the middle of uh, changing of career, but changing career to something that I'm really, really passionate about. And I see there's a very big connection between uh, caring for customers and also facilitation of, of trade. And uh, it's been very exciting. I went to, I went to, I was in uh, Cape Town under the Australian Awards program, whereby I undertook a course in trade policy and uh, and uh, negotiation. So I got quite a bit of uh, understanding, academic background on, on trade issues. So how did you develop the passion in the first place for trade, uh, trade facilitation? I can say I developed the passion on trade facilitation by uh, understanding understanding the impact of trade facilitation uh, to the world. The, the founder of this organization that I work for, Kentry, named Mr. Alex Kabuga, he was a very passionate trade facilitation. He's now passed on. And for, for me, he really brought it home on what trade facilitation means, the impact of trade facilitation on how if you facilitate trade, then it impacts even the price of commodities in the market. And it impacts on affordability you know the poor person down there if you facilitate trade it's not just competitiveness competitiveness for the country or you know lifestyle for the middle class but it impacts the small small person out there the poor so for me it it, it really it was it's so passionate for me because i feel i'm not just, i'm not just doing work for work purposes I'm not just earning a salary, but I'm contributing to bettering the lifestyle of a fellow Kenyan or a fellow African out there. So that's how I am really passionate about it because I feel I'm I'm, I'm contributing to a, a larger cause as opposed to just earning a living. And at the same time, it is uh, easy to acknowledge that there's not too much in terms of knowledge about the importance of trade facilitation uh, within the the population it's it's it almost almost comes across like a technical subject not something that affects yes. people day to day i agree with you why is I that so why yeah. is that so okay um i believe uh, partly it's because of um is a uh, lack of engagement uh, specifically in governments, 
uh, in terms of just getting out there for uh, you know getting information out there for the citizens to be able to understand because if you look at how trade facilitations organizations work they don't deal with the public they deal with the clearing and forwarding agents they deal with the exporters and importers they deal with government agencies they don't deal with the specific individual they don't deal with uh, a citizen a normal citizen so you'll find the awareness is mostly amongst business owners and government agencies yet the impact of trade facilitation the biggest impact of trade facilitation is on an, a normal citizen so i'll partly blame it to uh, to government who may not be doing specific uh, uh, engagement and public awareness and which i can say my organization as as kentred we really try to do public engagement it's very costly in terms of you know putting advertisements in uh, mass media it's not it's not it's not cheap and you're seeing governments now are even downsizing in terms of their budgets and when you look at the budgets that are fastly being uh, reduced are those budgets to do with mass media and you know getting information out there to, to the public but but as trade facilitators we are really emphasizing on the need of the primary beneficiary of trade facilitation being informed so that they can be able to support so that they can also be able to push the government to ensure that they are prioritizing trade facilitation so then, um, well, you did mention earlier about uh, the national single window system for Kenya. Um, what exactly is it and how is it helping uh, to make trade easier? Uh, the national single window system in Kenya is basically an electronic uh, system which helps traders to be able to lodge their documents. And uh, if you understand the international trade process, to be able to import or export something, you will require a permit, you will require to be able to pay tariffs, and you will need this from a government agency. So previously, before the implementation of the single window system, as an individual, you would be able to have to, you would have to walk into a government agency office, and you probably even walk into five or even 10 of them because the requirements for importing or exporting uh, a commodity or a good are several, might be several of them. But what ha has happened with the single window system, it has changed that, that at, at the click of a button, at the access of, 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 of internet, you know, at uh, using your computer, you can be able to lodge those documents. If it's a license, you can be able to lodge it through the single window system. And um, on the other end, the government agency that needs to do the approval of your license can be able to access your documentation through this electronic system and make the approval. Or if they are not making an approval, they can be able to give you feedback or, or what you need to add. So the benefit is, is it has eliminated a lot of time, wasting of time, because if you're working to 10 different government agencies, you're really wasting time. It has eliminated paperwork. It has eliminated corruption because you see uh, we have this issue of Africa whereby if you know if you have 10, 10, 10 uh, documents on, on your desk, somebody might tell you if you want me to deal with your document first, you must part with some money. So it has eliminated that face-to-face -face contact which was encouraging a lot of corruption. So there has been time savings in terms of movement of goods from one border to another, from the port uh, to the destination where the goods are going through uh, to, to. It has also led to ensuring that that process is paperless. So there's no paper in, in the process. Also payment of the permits and licenses is made online. So it has also ensured that there is efficiency and also government agencies are getting uh, they are getting uh, the revenues that they, they are getting, they are recording higher revenues because money is not being lost uh, by changing hands between, you know, two people through illegal practices. So there's really been a big uh, benefit by introducing the national single window system in Kenya. And the World Bank did uh, a study in uh, 2018 which uh, they were studying the impact of the single window system. And in their study, they said that uh, the single window system in Kenya has saved uh, Kenya 2.5 uh, million US dollars just in 2017. So as you can see, there's also been documented an empirical evidence on the benefit of the single window system. And ultimately, it's about promoting import and export and making it a, a stable exchange and you, you did yes. mention earlier perhaps before we started recording the actual interview that yes. trade is going to be the key to lifting africa and many other places out of poverty yes. um how true yes. is that 
This is specifically true because uh, if you look at the balance of trade in uh, in most African countries, most African countries are, have negative balances of trade, whereby they are importing more than they are exporting. And this is as a result of several technical barriers and as a result of uh, very many uh, uh, barriers towards entry into trade. You know, and you're having somebody who's having tomatoes, which he could export. He's having... Uh, probably um, a cottage industry which is producing uh, shoes, he could be able to export. But just the barriers towards entering that uh, international trade process is so difficult. The processes are so long, it's so technical. So you're finding it is discouraging uh, exports from taking place. So with trade facilitation in place, then this ensures that there is information provided for those who are interested in importing, in, in exporting. So, and this uh, leads to fair balances of trade and, you know, balanced, uh, balanced trade whereby you are having even a possibility of having uh, imports and exports either balancing or even having more exports. And if you look at uh, how we are looking at Africa and especially Kenya, if we are, our, our industrialization or our or our um, uh, our policy, our national trade policy, we are looking at having developing cottage industries and ensuring that we are promoting exports. So this can only uh, be achieved if we are able to facilitate trade and encourage the private sector to be able to invest in more and more industries that lead towards exports. And that kind of uh, brings up the point about the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, a a, a continent-wide project. How important is that to Africa? The Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement, as you are aware, is uh, the biggest, uh, one of the biggest uh, trade agreements uh, after the WTO that uh, has been signed uh, in the world. And um, if you look at the studies that have been conducted, it indicates that uh, the, 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 there's going to be around 2.5 uh, US trillion, 2.5 trillion US dollars of the 54 countries that have signed. is only one country that has not been able to sign onto the Africa continental free trade area. So the market is huge. And for me, I believe there's a lot of, there's a lot to be benefited by each of these countries because there's a lot of trade that is happening between Africa and the Western world, Africa and Asia, Africa and Europe not realizing there's so much potential within ourselves as Africans to be able to trade uh, trade amongst ourselves. And if you look at the trade that is happening between Africa and America and Africa and Asia, the, the entry barriers are so high in terms of uh, the, the measures that have been put in place. The, the sanitary and phytosanitary measures, you have several other measures. But when you look at trade between uh, African countries, I think there, there is an opportunity for the African continental free trade area to be able to set realistic uh, entry barriers to each other's markets. So there is a, a, a huge potential, I feel, in the African continental free trade area in terms of market access between uh, African countries. Also looking at areas of specialization, uh, there's been a big argument that uh, the reason why Africa countries are not trading with each other is because they are producing the same commodities. This could be true to some extent, but the, this agreement can be able to help us to now look at the areas of which we can be able to specialize. We can say Uganda, you can specialize in this. Ghana, you can you do this better, you can be able to specialize in this. I, I think you understand the, the comparative adva- advantage theory of economics, whereby you specialize in what you feel that you can be able to do best. So I believe that the continental free trade area not only will be able to help Africa grow, but also enhance in terms of sharing of technology, um, in, in terms of specialization, and just it will help help us to be able to grow as a regional bloc. My, for me, my dream is that the continental free trade area for Africa should now be moving towards, we should, our future should be to move towards being an, an uh, economic trading bloc like uh, the European Union, where we have our own you know, customs union uh, and become a regional trading bloc, whereby when we are trading with other continents, we have the numbers, we have a single negotiation platform as opposed to being torn apart 
by uh, other countries whereby when you're negotiating with uh, as alone as Kenya, then you're giving so much leeway. But if you negotiate as 54 African countries, then you're able to negotiate even much better. And you were mentioning also correctly before that of the 55 African countries, um, mm -hmm. um, there's only one that hasn't signed. And I just thought it would be yeah. nice to underscore the fact that we're saying that on the date we're recording this interview, which is the very last day of 2019, the 31st of yeah. December 2019. That way, anyone listening yeah. to this interview in the future can put it into proper context. And I was, I was going to say about the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, just how significant it is, how beneficial it's projected to be. And yet, it's been a long time coming. Why, why is it that the, the government uh, around the continent didn't see it, uh, that this is so good that they, it's something they could have organized perhaps even decades ago? Well, um, to answer your question, I think Africa has been dealing with very, very many issues. If you look at uh, the first country that I think gained independence in, in Ghana, I think Ghana was the first country to gain independence in Africa. They have been dealing with a lot of, a lot of issues in terms of uh, organizing themselves. There's been civil wars in Africa. There has been issues of uh, environmental disasters in Africa. There's been issues of political unrest, economic unrest. And I think as Africa, we are now coming of age. What has think, what I feel as Africa that has pulled us behind is that we have been dealing with all these issues that were brought about by colonization. We have not been ourselves for a long time. And I think now we are coming of age and realizing that as Africa, we can no longer start, uh, we can no longer continue to be you know, different. We can no longer continue to be uh, one ca each country on its own. That the dreams of our fathers, like Kwame Nkrumah, the Pan-Africanist, ma ma we must now start following that dream. We must now start reasoning as an African continent, as opposed to start reasoning as as a country, just as a country or, the, or a regional economic bloc. So I think uh, for us, it's not entirely our fault as, as Africans. I think the colonization took a toll on us. We are still having a lot of leadership crisis whereby we are having uh, leaders being very selfish and not uh, looking at the benefit of their citizens. But I think as Africa, we are moving ahead. If you look at now the, the what what countries are doing, you know, the infrastructures are in place. We are having uh, democracies in place. We are having better leadership. We are having women leadership. We are having uh, equality and diversity in Africa. So we are moving to a place of whereby we were thinking selfishly to a place whereby we are thinking, we are now understanding that if we think collectively, we can be able to make such a difference in Africa. So I think that was our problem, but we have now overcome it. And so at this point, Africa is stepping into the second decade of the 21st century with uh, open borders, with deeper yes. trade and integration how prepared is the continent from your perspective as a trade facilitator? How prepared is the continent to fully embrace this beyond just signatures on paper as an agreement? Maybe I can just speak for my for, for Kenya. I think Kenya is very prepared. I think we are one of the few countries who have not only uh, signed the uh, Continental Free Trade Agreement, we have also ratified it. In addition to that, we are also a signatory of the WTO Trade Facilitation Agreement. We are one of the lead members uh, in the East Africa community whereby we are, the, I think, the country that has really been pushing for the East Africa community for a, for a long time. We are very active members of COMETA, and we are pushing for the tripartite. We are also beneficiaries of the AGOA Act. So as, as Kenya, I would speak for Kenya and say that uh, we have been very progressive and uh, looking at how we can be able to make trade work for us. Kenya has also been a champion uh, at the at, at the uh, continental free trade agreement, just by ensuring that we are pushing and lobbying for other countries to be able to be to be part of that. So for me, I feel uh, as Kenya, we are very prepared, and also other uh, other African countries are now realizing that they cannot only rely on aid. 
they now need to move forward and uh, and build their countries. And their countries cannot be built uh, on aid. It can only be built by ensuring there is increased trade uh, coming their way. And this can only be done if they are able to make their country more competitive. And competitiveness can only be done through trade facilitation by ensuring that you are a favorable trading destination and not only having local practices, but having best practices in terms of standardization and looking at what is what the world is doing, copying. Like if you look at the single window system in Kenya, is a system that was borrowed from Singapore. The implementer of the single window system in Kenya is a vendor from Singapore. So we are borrowing from best practices. It is my belief that Kenya doesn't have to wait 100 years or Africa doesn't have to wait 100 years to get to where America has gotten, to get to where China has gotten. We have the benefit of, of, of uh, technology, which can be able to help us get there in half of the time. That's a very positive outlook you've painted there, um, uh, Rose. And and also then it will be fair to address what you might see as um, remaining challenges in getting people on board to the point where it becomes second nature, uh, where trade facilitation and acceptance is concerned. I think the challenge that is remaining is that... Uh, uh, in terms of creation of, creation of awareness, in terms of how important or how uh, beneficial the trade facilitation agreement is. So that creation of awareness is something that really needs uh, to get out there for countries to be able to understand how important it is, is to them. Because if you understand how international trade works, international trade works by effectiveness of value chains. So if you're, uh, any, any weak link in the value chain affects the other the other other links in the value chain so you can't say as as a country that you're only going to make yours your 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 your, your chain bet, better than uh, than others we need to look at it collectively we need to look at it that if kenya we have already achieved uh, such a milestone can we look at the members of the east africa uh, community can we be able to help them can the other members of the East Africa community benchmark on one another on trade facilitation issues? And I think another another big challenge of the trade facilitation agreement or the trade facilitation uh, being uh, understood is that there's not many studies out there on the impact, the financial impact of it. I think the World Bank did fa- the first one in Kenya, whereby we had the impact of the single window system, a single trade facilitation uh, trade facilitation reform, which had led to a $2.5 billion saving in 2017 in Kenya. So we, if we can have several studies done whereby governments are shown impacts of implementing trade facilitation reforms elsewhere, then there will be that drive and uh, there will be that motivation to be able to implement more of these agreements. Ross Rono, it's a pleasure talking to you about this important topic and I very much appreciate your time. You're welcome. And that was the thoughtful business conversation with Rose Rono, the head of the Trade Facilitation Directorate at Kentrade. Kentrade, of course, is a government agency in Kenya responsible for trade facilitation. My name is Philip Nyakbo, your host, and African Port Business Forum is produced by African Port Media in Perth. Subscribe free to our audio podcast if you haven't done so already. We are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcast. To find us on YouTube, just search for African Pod Business Forum.